Welcome to Orozco's Lectures. I am Jose Orozco, and these are my lectures. This lecture is a pre-calculus lecture. I hope you enjoy it. This is chapter 3.2, which is on logarithmic functions and their graphs. All right, so first let's define what we're talking about here. So for x being greater than zero, a being um, also greater than zero, and a not equal to one, we get that these following statements are true or equivalent. y is equal to log base a of x if and only if um, a to the y is equal to x. Let's write that better. a to the y equals 2x. All right. Now, in here, um, this function is called a logarithmic function. So if I write it as f of x is equal to log base a of x, we call this the logarithmic function. with base a. All right. Now, one thing I want to make clear here. This part right here essentially tells us the domain of the logarithmic functions. All right. Essentially, what this says is the input here has to be a real number greater than zero. All right. So now, um, Let's uh, let's get some practice evaluating some logarithmic expressions. So evaluate. Let's say that I have f of x is equal to log base six of x, and I said evaluate. Let's start easy. F of one. Well, f of one would then be log base six of one. And well, the question now is, well, how do we actually evaluate that? Well, let's look at our definition up here. When we had this as y equals log base a of x, this is telling us that we can rewrite it this way, a to the y equals x. All right, so let's do this. Let's write this as some variable is equal to log base six of one. And by our definition over here, we're gonna rewrite this as our base six, to the a is equal to one. And the question here is, well, what is a equal to? Well, six to some power equals one. Well, that power will be zero. So what we found here, essentially, and this was essentially all side work, so I'll put it in blue. Um, from our side work here, we found that the answer is equal to zero, all right? Because in here, we found that a is equal to zero, a is equal to log base six of one. So there you go. Let's do another one. Um, with the same function here, let's evaluate f of 216, all right? So this will tell us, well, we're gonna have log base six of 216, right? And now, just like we did before with our side work, let's do something similar. So I'm gonna say a is equal to log base six of 216 which by definition tells us that six to the a is equal to 216. All right, now from here, I happen to know the powers of six. This 216 is the same thing as saying six to the third, which tells us now that a is equal to three. So what we found here is that this is equal to three. So, Another way of thinking about these uh, problems is that what they're really saying is our base to some power equals our input. What is that power? Similarly here, our base to some power equals the input. What is that power? All right, what is that exponent? Um, let's do another one. So 
example c let's say that f of x was log base 5 of x and i asked for f of 125 all right uh let's fix that let's do it as 1 over 125 even better all right so we're going to say this becomes log base 5 of 1 over 125 and again in here we could think of this as saying 5 to some power equals 121 what is me 1 over 125 so 5 to some power is equal to 1 over 125. Well, let's see how we can rewrite this 1 over 125. 1 over 125 is the same, same, same thing as saying 1 over 5 cubed. And this would be the same thing as saying 5 to the negative 3. So what we found here is that 5 to the a is equal to 5 to the negative 3, which tells us that a is equal to negative 3. So 5 to some power is equal to this value. Well, that value or that power was negative 3. All right. Um, similarly, I can say, you know, something like, what is f of 25? And this would say, well, that's log base 5 of 25. And this is saying 5 to some power is 25. Well, 5 to what power? 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. So our answer there is 2. All right, let's do one one more here um d let's say that i have f of x is equal to log base 10 of x and i asked for f of 10,000 well this would say log base 10 of 10,000 and what this is really saying is well 10 to some power equals 10,000. What power would that be? Well, the good thing about powers of 10 is that you can just count the zeros. So 10 to some power, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 10 to the 4th. So let me, do, let me just write the side real quick what I just said. So 10 to the 4th happens to be equal to 10,000. So our answer here is 4, all right? Because 10 to the 4th is 10,000. Similarly, I could say, what is f of 1 one hundredth? And this would say, well, that's log base 10 of 1 over 100. And this is saying, well, to what power do I need to raise 10 to to get 1 over 100? Well, 1 over 100 is equal to 1 over 10 squared, which is just 10 to the negative 2. So to what power do I need to raise 10 to to get to 1 over 100? negative two all right all right now one thing i want to say about this uh log base 10 that's called the common log so let me just formally define that the common log all right so the common log is defined as follows log base 10 of x, all right? So that's the common log base 10. And we just write it as log of x, all right? So in the same way that when I write just x, there is an invisible one here, an invisible one here. This is over an invisible one, right? There's all these invisible ones happening here. Well, in here, there's an invisible 10, all right? Kind of like also with the square roots, there's an invisible two there, all right? Anyway, so when we just write log of x, that just means log base 10 of x. This right here, you definitely have a button for on the calculator, by the way. You wouldn't have it for most of the other bases. We'll talk about that in a bit. But now, let's, um, let's evaluate some of these. Um, well, where was I at? D, so E. If I just wrote log of 10, well, this is just saying, what is the power of 10 to which I must raise 10 by to get to 10? So the power is 1, because 10 to the 1 is 10. All right, that was easy. 
what if it was log of 1000 all right well it's just saying 10 to some power is 1000 3 because 10 to the third is 1000 <clears throat> but what if it wasn't such a nice number like log of one third well here is where your calculator comes into play all right a scientific calculator you should have a button that says log on your calculator or log either way um so on your scientific calculator you would have those uh, those buttons so what you would do here is you would enter it as log of one third or log of one third and see what that gives you well it turns out that when you plug it into the calculator it gives us negative zero point four seven seven one two one three approximately all right <clears throat> now let's get some properties of logs here um and this applies to any base these properties all right <clears throat> The first property is that log base a of one is equal to zero. All right. Irrelevant of what the base is, if I have log base a of one is equal to zero. Now, why would that be? Well, the reason that is is because a to the zero is equal to one, right? For any finite value of a. Next property. If I have log base a of a, that's equal to one. Now, why would that be? Well, if I put it in exponential form, it's really saying that a to the one is equal to a, right? a to the zero equals one, a to the one equals a. Next property, if I have log base a of a to the x, that gives me x, all right? Now, why would this be? This is because, well, a to the x, a to the x, is equal to the inside, a to the x. Perhaps I'll do the other sides here in a different color to, symbol, to symbolize the inside part, all right? So, in blue, I have a to the x, and I said blue, and I put it in yellow. a to the x is equal to a to the x. All right, along with this property, there's another one that says that a to the log base a of x is also equal to x, all right? Now, these two properties are called the inverse properties, all right? Because when we apply them, you end up with just x by itself. All right, so essentially what we're seeing here is that log base a and a to the x cancel each other out. And a to the log base a of x, well, these cancel each other out. All right, we'll talk more about that in a bit. The last property here that we'll talk about for now is that if log base a of x equals log base a of y, Well, then x is equal to y. All right, this is the one to one property for log. All right, so let's get some examples in. So the last one I did was g, I think. Yeah, g. So h. So let's say that I have log base 11 of 11. Well, from this property right here, it's equal to one. I, right. let's say I have 23 raised to the log base 23 of seven. Well, that would just be equal to seven because of the inverse property right here. J. 
let's say I had log of the square root of 3 of 1. Well, from the very first property, doesn't matter what the base is, if I got 1 there, I get 0. Um, if I had something like log base 3 of x is equal to log base 3 of 12 well this would tell us that x is equal to 12 let's move that up uh, that's a bad placement there we go l All right. Um, if we had something like log base 13, and this is 13, of x squared plus 3 is equal to log base 13 of 12. Well, this would tell me now that x squared plus 3 is equal to 12, which would then tell me that x squared is equal to 9 which would then tell me that x is equal to plus or minus 3 all right and they both work both positive and negative all right i know at the very beginning of the class I, or this lecture i said that um <clears throat> the input had to be positive right and i'll remind you real quick let me just scroll real uh, up real quick see i said the domain x had to be greater than zero but we're talking about the entire argument inside there in parentheses being greater than zero. If you look at this problem, if I plug in the negative three, negative three squared is positive nine. Nine plus three is 12. So this entire thing ends up being positive. So it's okay to have that negative three. All right. Um, now, let's, uh, let's talk about the graphs of logarithmic functions, all right? Because uh, we've just been talking about some properties and some ways to evaluate it, but let's see what they look like. So, graphs of logarithmic functions. All right, so first let's, uh, let's look at this function. Let's look at the exponential function of 2 to the x. All right. In here, if I plug in different values of x, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and I look at f of x, well, we already know that this is 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, and 4, right? Just plug in these values into here. What we have seen so far, and I'm going to scroll real quick to show you where I'm talking about. Here, because of the inverse property, what we have shown here is that exponentials and logarithmics are inverse functions. All right. So what does that mean in terms of a graph? So if I have g of x is equal to log base 2 of x well since these are going to be inverse functions of each other we know that the domain and the range have to switch so all the inputs here are going to be outputs and all the outputs here are going to be inputs how come because think about it if i want to get the answer of um excuse me if i want to plug in one fourth right and i have he inside here one fourth so two to some power equals one fourth well two to the negative two plug in one half two to some power equals one half that's what this is telling us negative one similarly for the rest all right so again the idea here is that the domain becomes a range and the range becomes a domain so in fact here what we're essentially saying is that this function g of x is f inverse of x, right? 
Now, graphically, what does that imply? Well, we know what exponential functions look like on the graph. So let's go ahead and graph that first. And I'm going to graph it in uh, yellow. All right. 2 to the x, we know, crosses at the point 0, 1. Uh, right. And it has a horizontal asymptote of 0. And it just looks like this. All right. Let me extend this. All right. Now, I'm going to graph f of x in blue. But before I do that, here in red, I'm going to remind you about something that happens with inverse functions and with a function and its inverse. They are symmetric about the line y equals x. All right? That was a graphical um, property. So what does that mean? Well, if they're going to be symmetric and the domain becomes a range, well, this point 0, 1 is going to become the point 1, 0. <clears throat> and then, well, to make the, the graph here look as a mirror image along the line y equals x, we would have something like this. Now let's draw that again. All right. Uh, we can make it better. There we go. That's kind of better. Close enough. All right, but the idea again is that it becomes a mirror image over the line y equals x. And here in yellow, we have, um, no, we had 2 to the x. And in blue, we have um, log base 2 of x, which we already said this is the same thing as saying f inverse. All right. Now, let's look at graphs of um, logarithmic graphs overall, just uh, some, some general aspects of it. All right. So, graph of f of x is equal to log base a of x for a being greater than zero. Actually, this is going to be strictly for a being greater than one. All right. <clears throat> now, the domain here is that x must be greater than zero. In other words, in interval notation, we're going from zero to infinity. Oh, before I continue, one thing I wanted to say too here. Notice that this horizontal asymptote became a vertical asymptote. All right. It became a vertical asymptote. So in here, we're never actually going to touch the line of zero, of x equals zero, which is implied here. All right. Uh, the range is, well, all real numbers. In other words, from negative infinity to positive infinity. The x-intercept is always going to be 1, 0, right, for a strictly logarithmic function. By that I mean with when we don't have any shifts yet, right, like the parent function. This is going to be an increasing function because from left to right, it's going up, right? So we're looking at this graph. It is a one-to-one -one function. That's how we know that it has an inverse, explicitly being the exponentials. We have the y-axis um, is the vertical asymptote, right? That's what I was mentioning before. The y-axis becomes a vertical asymptote. So, and just to keep in mind how, it's, how is it working around that vertical asymptote, well, the function itself is going towards negative infinity as x as x goes to zero from the right. All right, this little plus sign just means from the right. So what am I saying here? As we're getting closer and closer to zero this way, the function itself is going down this way. 
All right? That's what that's saying. We're approaching it from the right. So we're walking from right to left. All right. Now, it's a continuous function, all right? And the last thing I will say here is that it is a reflection of a to the x over the line y equals x, right? Which, again, all that's really saying is that they are inverses of each other. But in general, just to have a quick little sketch here of our generic parent function on its own. So we've got a vertical asymptote here. This is our vertical asymptote of x equals zero. We've got an intercept at one, and it looks something like this. All right. So all logarithmic functions have that form when our base is bigger than one. Now, um, let's sketch some. Let's see, sketch. And I think that was the letter M. Maybe, yeah, the next one is M. Good, M. So let's say that I had um, F of X is equal to, let's start simple, log base three of X minus one. All right. Now, in here, well, what's going on here? Well, the only thing, well, first, what is the parent function? The parent function is y is equal to log base 3 of x, which we already know looks like that, crossing that 1. But what's going on here? Things are being shifted down by 1, right? This tells us shift down by 1. So what is that going to do? Well, when I go to this point right here, remember this point right here was originally 0, 1. It then goes, since it's going down by 1, it's going to become 0, 2. So when I go to sketch this, I mean, I'm still going to have the same vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote didn't change because we didn't shift left or right. But everything shifted down by 1. So I'm going to have this point right here. Uh, zero, uh, oh. we're supposed to be going down by one. That shouldn't say zero, two. Um, and hold on. This is awful. Look at all the mistakes I made here. This point right here is not zero, one. The point right here is one, zero. And perhaps I should be doing that in blue. All right. So that point right there is one, zero. Let's try this again. This thing, since it's going down by one, is gonna go down to one, negative one. All right, now it makes sense. So this point right here is one, negative one. All right, cool. Then the rest of this is, I have to make this look like a logarithmic function, which essentially means that. Now, the next thing I need to do here is, well, what is this point right here? That is our x-intercept, all right? So our x-intercept, let's find it. The x-intercept is when y is equal to zero, right? So I'm gonna say log base three of x minus one is equal to zero. So log base three of x is equal to one. And in here, well, what is the value of x here? If I change this to exponential form, this is really gonna say that three to the one is equal to x. So x is just three. So I get the point three, zero. So it tells me now that this point three zero is this one right here, and obviously it's not drawn to scale, right? So this is three zero. All right. Let's do another one. So that was M. So and oh, by the way, we didn't have to look for a y-intercept because we know the y-axis is the vertical asymptote so it would have never hit it there all right now let's do another one and let's uh, set sketch f of x is equal to log base 3 of 
let's do negative x. All right. So in here, this, what's happening here? Well, first, let's look at our parent function. Our parent function is just log base 3 of x, which we know looks like this. This point right here is at the point 1, 0. What transformation is happening here? Well, we only have one transformation happening, which is a reflection over, remember it's happening on the inside. On the inside, it means it's over the y-axis. All right, so it's reflection over the y-axis. In other words, it's a, it's a horizontal flip. And that's the only thing that's happening here, right? So, well, what would that mean for our graph? Our vertical asymptote is still the same because it was just this line right here. But if we're going to reflect over the y-axis, this point is going to go to negative 1, 0, all right? Essentially, the x values become neg negated and the y values remain the same. So now, we're going to have this point right here. That's at negative 1. And there we go. That's log base 3 of the negative x. Let's do another one. Let's say that I said f of x is equal to, let's change the base, log base 5 of x plus 2. Eh, let's do x plus, x plus 5. Fine, x plus 5. What does this mean? Well, let's see. Our parent function here is y is equal to log base 5 of x. And what does that look like? Well, there you go. That's what that looks like, crossing at 1, 0. What transformation is happening here? Well, the transformation, so it's happening on the inside, is going to go to the left by 5. Notice that implies something about this vertical asymptote. Everything's being shifted to the value, to the left, including the vertical asymptote. So what we found here is that the original vertical asymptote is x is equal to 0. Now let's see where everything gets shifted to. This is being shifted to the left by 5, so it's going to go to negative 4, 0. This is shifting to the left by 5, so it's going to go to the line x equals negative 5. The next thing we need are some intercepts. Well, we already have the x-intercept. We need the y-intercept, though. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. So let's see what happens here. We end up with, um, well, essentially f of 0, which is log base 5 of 5, which is 1, right? Because it's saying 5 to some power equals 5. Well, 5 to the 1. So this gives us the point 0, 1. And now let's go ahead and sketch this. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 5. So there's, ooh, what's going on there? Negative 5. There we go. And we're just going to draw our logarithmic graph. And the next thing is, well, what are these points? This point, our x-intercept, is negative 4, 0. I'll just write it as negative 4 there. And our y-intercept is 1. Obviously, this is not drawn to scale. But the idea is there. All right. So again, just like we were doing with um, with exponential functions, all we're looking at here is the the transformations to be able to graph these. All right, now one last thing that I want to mention here is that there's something called the natural log function, which works in the same exact way as all the log functions that we've been talking about. So the natural log function. 
The natural function, nat uh, blah, blah, blah. let's start that over. The natural log function hmm, is the one where you use the natural number as your base. And if you recall, the natural number was e, so log base e of x. But it comes up so much that, well, maybe I won't do it in script, that we write it as ln of x. A lot of times you'll see me write it as ln, all right, and um, like a script ln. But if you write it this way, it's the same. One huge um, mistake that I see a lot of students make here is that when they see this symbol in textbooks or online or anything like that, they assume that this is a capital I and students will write IN. I'm telling you that now so that you don't do that. This is wrong. This doesn't say anything. All right. You should be writing ln. It's a lowercase l. Um, and you do have a button for ln on your calculator. All right. You either have it as ln or ln. All right. Either way, same exact thing. Now in here, um, well, what does this function look like? So if I said f of x is equal to ln of x, well, e. If you think about e, e is bigger than one, so it follows the same exact pattern as far as the graph goes from all the ones that we just sketched so what would it look like it would have a vertical asymptote at zero and it would look like that crossing at one all right that would be just the general shape of it um now this uh, this has the same exact properties as all the other logs, and by that I mean you know things like um, ln of one is e zero, ln of e is one, ln of e to the x is equal to x, e to the ln of x is equal to x. All right, um, what else? So I'm just trying to compare it to the properties I spoke about before. Oh, the other one, the one-to-one -one property, um, it also tells us that ln of x being equal to ln of y would imply that x is equal to y. All right, that was our one-to-one our -one property. So all these properties still hold. All right. And these two right here were the inverse properties. And the last one is the one to one property. All right. So let's um, let's do an example or two of these. What letter was I at? Oh, so P. So if I said, well, what is ln of e to the one third? Well, we would say that's just one third. If we said, um, what is seven to the ln of one. Well, that would just be zero because ln of one is zero. So we have seven times zero. If I said three quarters times ln of e, well, ln of e is just one. So we end up with just three quarters. All right, um, if I said e, to the ln of pi, well, I would know this just simplifies down to pi, right? Because of this inverse property over here, all right? So, so again, essentially all of the all of the same properties that we were talking about before still hold for ln, all right? So even the sketches, so sketch. So let's say that I said f of x is equal to ln of x minus 2. All right. And in here, well, what uh, what do we see here is our transformation. Well, first, the parent function. The parent function is ln of x, which we know looks like this, crossing at 1. If I have ln of x minus 2, that means everything's being shifted to the right by two, including this vertical asymptote here. Our vertical asymptote is originally the line 
x equals 0. So let's see. This point of 1, 0. Well, where would all this go to? This would go to 1, 2, right? Because everything... Hold on. Not 1, 2. 3, 0. There we go. We're shifting to the right x values. Our vertical asymptote will be shifted to the line x equals 2. And let's see. What would this do for us? This gives us the following graph. Everything's being shifted to the right by 2. So let's call that our vertical asymptote of 2. Right? The vertical asymptote x equals 2. And then we just have to draw an ln graph. Well, the ln graph looks like that. And this point right here, our x-intercept is just crossing at 3. All right, so it's just being shifted to the right. All right. Um, now, in here, well, another, value, another thing we can do here is Let's let's talk about finding domains, right? Because the sketching is going to be the same exact thing as all the other stuff. But let's find the domain. And we're at T, so U. Let's say that I have f of x is equal to ln of x plus 3. We'll start easy. So ln of x plus 3, what this tells us is that x plus 3 must be greater than 0, right? So for our domain, the inside must be positive. So x must be greater than negative 3. We're done. Cool. That wasn't that difficult. Let's do a hard one. V. Let's say f of x was equal to ln of 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. What would the domain be here? Well, we got to be careful here, right? Because in here, we would say this inside stuff, 2x minus 3 over x plus 1, has to be greater than 0. But within this, we have that in the, within the problem, the domain of the problem is that x cannot be equal to negative 1. So we have to be careful about that, right? So the next thing we do is here, well, we treat this as if it was an equal sign, right? So we have 2x minus 3 over x plus 1 is equal to 0. Solve for x. Well, I have a fraction equaling 0. So 2x minus 3, the numerator itself, must be equal to 0, giving me x is equal to 3 halves. And now what I need to do here is test around these values on the number line. So here's negative 1, here's 3 halves, right? And in both of these scenarios, we're not allowed to equal it. So we're going to have open circles. The question is, where are we going to shade? Well, let's test to the left of negative 1, we'll test negative 2. Between negative 1 and 3 halves, we'll test 0. And above 3 halves, we'll test uh, 2. So let's start with the easy one first. Let's put 0 in there. If I put 0 in here, well, I end up with just 3 over negative, excuse me, negative 3 over 1. And is that greater than 0? No, it is not. So in other words, I ended up with a negative over a positive, which gave me a negative. So it falls there. Let's plug in negative 2. On the top, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative. Plug it in on the bottom. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative. Overall, this is positive. Is a positive greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we're going to shade this. Let's plug in 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 3 is positive. 2 plus 1, positive. Overall, positive. So it's true there as well, right? Because a positive is greater than zero. So we get all of that. So in here, what we found is that the domain is from negative infinity to negative 1, not including negative 1, 
union 3 halves to infinity all right and um and there we go i will so that's that's the end of uh, of 3.2 wasn't that fun if you think i made a mistake somewhere you're probably right tell me all about it in the comments if you feel you learned something from me in this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly, share it. Share this video with your classmates. And remember, you don't have to like math in order to be good at it. But you do have to be good at it. I am Jose Orozco. Goodbye.